Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and while I've looked at my most anticipated figure from Wave 2 of DC Collectibles, Bruce Tim Designer Line, I think it's time to look at my favorite figure from that same wave. This is Robin, as seen in Batman the Animated Series. And yes, there have been many waves since Wave 2, as of this recording. Robin captures the look of his design from the original Bruce Tim cartoon, hitting all the boy wonder visual notes one could ask for. He's smaller and leaner than Batman, and his slightly matured yet still kinda goofy costume looks sharp with strong paintwork to bring out the big bold blocks of yellow, green, red, and black. Things get a little sloppy where his green leggings meet his red underoos or where the yellow meets the black on his cape, but the key details like his R symbol or domino mask look great upon scrutiny. As always, try to get one in person if you can, so you can scrutinize those paint apps yourself. His head sculpt, in general, stands up to such scrutiny. It's a great classic BTAS Robin expression with a toothy smirk and very specifically messy hair. For real, the floppy, spiky sculpt of Robin's hair is one of the best representations of what the Bruce Tim designer line can offer as far as animation rendered in the physical form. Robin's cape is draped down over one shoulder, just one. I really wish it was just over both like on New Adventures Batman, but hey, just like that figure, you can swap the cape out for an action cape that's flared up to give both shoulders room to move. You can also swap Robin's fists out for a pair of calm and open hands. As a post-Wave 1 release in the line, the wrist pegs feel fairly solid despite their thin and ribbed nature. If you don't want fists or open hands, there are also gripping hands for riding invisible motorcycles. And hey, before you demand things to hold that aren't invisible, Robin includes a big rubber bola thingy. It looks kind of stiff. Despite being rubbery, it doesn't look either limp or taut enough to convince me in most poses. I really wish it was like a sick radical bow staff. Robin's accessories round out with a throwback to the New Adventures Batman figure as he has a dedicated left hand sculpted onto a grapnel. And then, a standalone grapnel. I still don't entirely get what the solo one is for other than set dressing. Finally, another great Tampa Graft animation model turnaround is included, once again printed on a white piece of plastic. That's also a really weak display stand. Since he has a cape, Robin's stand doesn't have that ridiculous sticky outy stuff that juts out the back of some of the stands other Tim series figures have got. Small victories! Young Master Dick has an amazing ball socketed neck joint. Like, look at this. It's everything I want out of a neck. It looks great. So happy. Can I just do this for a couple minutes? Yeah, all right. His shoulders are on universal joints. They can go forwards and backwards pretty well. Um, by the way, I'm using the action cape so we don't have to deal with all that drapery. Uh, when they go out, they go like one click out. It's a soft, buttery, detented click. That's it. Kind of a bummer, but uh, it still looks fine since you can you know, swing them up like this. And It's a decent range, but man, I wish there was a bit more. Uh, it's... That whole thing where they are keeping the outside of the shoulder uh, more clean on the sculpt, and I feel like I'm okay seeing hinge there when I can see hinge here. The elbows are great, by the way, while I'm talking about them. There's like two notable clicks of, uh, of rotation and a bicep swivel. Um, it's a bit of a weird thing that the bicep cut wasn't up here where the t-shirt cut is, but, well, you know, whatever. Um, he's got a, well, you know, as I'm saying that, he also has a glove cut and a wrist swivel, and a very solid wrist hinge. Almost audibly clicks, like two clicks in either direction. And, uh, you know, it's new materials, so this guy does not feel fragile like the first wave of these uh, Bruce Tim series figures did, even though his wrist pegs are, like, tiny. Uh, they feel like very good material. Uh, he's got a straight-up waist cut right there under his belt. I wish everyone had this. Uh... And maybe they do, you know, as we go through the series, we'll see. But, like, this is lovely. Uh, his hips can go forward about that far. Not quite 90 degrees. They start to bump into the curvature of uh, the, the cut there on the pelvic area. Then there's a dedicated outward motion, which does look weird. But, you know, it's nice that he can do a, a pretty good high kick. Uh, there's no thigh swivel. Kind of the story of these guys and of DC collectibles in general is very much the no, the no thigh swivel game, which really bums me out. And a single jointed knee that bends not quite 90 degrees. Um, feels alright. Like, you know, again, the new materials, especially on Robin, uh, who is about as poseable as that New Adventures Batman, if I recall correctly. I haven't actually checked. Feels great. Uh, he's got a boot cut. He's got an ankle hinge. 
There's an ankle tilt. Uh, and then as you tilt the ankle, the toe starts to point farther and farther away, so you can use the boot cut to adjust for that. Uh, he, he feels pretty good. Like, he's not super poseable. I've never expected this DC Direct line to be super poseable. Um, it would be really cool if they were, but I think then they'd have to be at least another 10 bucks uh, more expensive. And uh, I like it. Like, he can just he can drop kick dudes. He can punch fools. All, like, zap pow. Like, it's, it's a pleasant, full experience for around about 20-ish bucks. Um, and it's better than the Joker. So, uh, I just wanted to show that, like, you know, you can have a much more solid experience uh, that still has the new materials. And even with these tiny feet, he's able to get a pretty solid stance going on. If only the ranges were all a little bit wider. Robin is a darn fine high point in the Bruce Tim designer line. I'm still waiting for a damn fine one, but Dick Grayson brings the best qualities I have seen in the series so far. A great sculpt, bold paint, a nice suite of accessories with the upgraded build quality of the post-Wave 1 era, and he also looks a touch more natural than Batman in many poses, as his animation model's leaner build doesn't hit the awkward zone as fast when twisting the waist. At this point, it's pretty clear that this line is like a massively evolved version of the old Kenner figures, with sculpts and standing postures taking priority over heavy articulation, but all major points of articulation still being present. I still would love to see something with an even higher budget take a swing at the DCAU's aesthetic, merged with natural-looking super articulation, but as it is for around 20 US dollars per figure, this line sates my fanboy thirst, though it does not quench it. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I absolutely want to cover more of these Bruce Tim Batman pieces. Now that I've hit most of the basics of the Wave 1 to Wave 2 transition, I think I might get a little more random with who and what I put to digital videotape in future.